This podcast is brought to you by sarahraven.com, which is home to everything you need for a truly beautiful and productive garden. You'll also find great and essential gardening kit and stylish, lovely things to have in your house to bring the outside indoors, all inspired by the garden and the house being tied together. There's also plenty of garden inspiration, how-to videos and specialist growing guides. So head over to sarahraven.com today to discover even more. Welcome to Grow, Cook, Eat, Arrange, the podcast of me and today again, Arthur Parkinson. Yay, he's back and we are talking about the things that we are going to use to decorate our houses for Christmas. So it's our kind of top picks of the things that we found over the years that are in the Christmas range. So I'm going to kick off with you, first of all, Arthur. So what is the thing that you can't live without? Well, can, can I just say, look, opening this this Christmas catalogue, the thing that is, I'm probably going to cut out and put on my little advent calendar is the amazing photo of you in full perch hill snow queen mode walking through the cutting garden (laughs) well well done jonathan butley for getting that snap it's so lovely oh i've got to tell you the story about that actually because it's quite funny it's not photoshopped is it it's very much snow time (laughs) so that was in the um the cold snap the very very cold snap (laughs) in like it was it the first or second week of december last year and normally I'll ring Jonathan saying, we've got snow. And he'll, he'll, <laughs> Come, he'll, quick. he'll say to me, yeah, but it'll have gone and got muddy and horrible by the time I get there. And and so I rang him and I said, we've got snow and apparently we're going to have snow for several days. So please, will you come? And he said, well, how am I going to get in? And I said, I promise you, we'll get you in. Come hell or hair water, we'll get you in. And so Adam sweetly husband Adam, we got him to drive to the sort of the grass triangle at the top of the lane where you can leave your car. Mm. And Adam walked up with the wheelbarrow. And so Jonathan left his car up there and they walked down together with all Jonathan's kit, all his lenses and cameras and everything. Yeah, it's so heavy. Down down the lane, uh, slipping and sliding because we don't get gritted here at all, which is why we always get snowed in if there's snow. And he then spent three days photographing birds in the snow, eating sort of fat balls that we put out, all the pots covered in three inches of snow. And yeah, so anyway, it was well worth it. We've got Christmas cards for years, I can tell you from that shoot. Good, good. (laughs) Yes, so well spotted. It's not photoshopped. It's genuine from the freeze that we had last December. Anyway, okay, well, that's your first thing. So my first thing, Without doubt, I I just have to give a shout out to our calendar and diary. And I just, I feel proud of it every year, but somehow the 2024 calendar and diary is just the most beautiful, I think. And I don't know, I just feel, Jonathan and I have worked together so long, and sometimes one might think that that would make us get tired. But I feel the pictures that we've got in it are are just so beautiful. Well, both of them, both the diary and the calendar. And so each month there's a picture that we took the previous year of our favorite things that were looking particularly good at that moment. And then there's a recipe too, of course. But yeah, I feel, I really feel proud of them. I think they look absolutely beautiful. And um, I feel proud having them out on the table and and hanging on the wall. Yeah, well said. They're they're wonderful and I love I love it on shoots when you're both there as we're doing photos and you go, oh, that's, that's a calendar. Yeah. It's a calendar shot. You know, you've got a real good vibe together. And it, it's interesting, you know, when you give someone one of these calendars as a present, they often become addictive. You want one every year. My mum certainly does because oh, they're just living compared to this, you know, this, forget about the supermarket calendars that you see. They don't give you advice like this one does. You know, it, it is in, it, in a way a little helpful little journal through the year. A sort of aid memoir of what you should yeah, be doing. Yeah, very much so, yeah. And what you should be cooking. Mm. Good. So what? what's your sort of top pick? Well, not, no, no order really, no hierarchy, but what are the things that you're going to use at Christmas? Well, I'm going to go straight to decorations then. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> because um, funnily enough, the thing that's, that's jumped out at me and made me smile is um, bizarrely one of your increasing varieties of felt animals. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that have now got a whole page. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the, the Wallace and Gromit sheep. 
Oh yes, they are. That looks funny. like he's been through the um the, the tumble dryer and come out blow dried with the conditioner. I think he looks great. I wish um his mate was as fuzzy, but I think they're gonna look quite funny and, yes. and get funny remarks when they're hanging around somewhere. So yeah, um, what are they called? Fluffy sheep decoration. Oh uh, yeah, good. Yeah, well, the llama's <laughs> been our bestseller for years, so I think the llama's I... not coming home. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. Is anyway. it a llama or an alpaca? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit them. small. <laughs> <laughs> but the sheep I, um, jumped out at me. I rather love sheep. I know some people think they're the thickest animal on a farm, but no, you've got a lovely flock of old sheep. They 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 look like your old sheep, actually. Those two. And they mm. do. They yeah. do. They're sweet. Well, I'm not coming on to indoor decorations yet because I have just got to rave about a couple of things. Just because they really are tried and tested here. So the solar allium stakes have have really just been completely amazing for years now. And we have them poked into the box balls. So it's sort of they're in this rhythm all the way down the path. And I don't always have them out there. But if I've got a party or I've got, you know, anything that I just want to feel a bit festive and particularly coming up to Christmas when it gets darker, obviously, and the hours of daylight are much longer... I just find them amazing because they really, really, really do just light up as it gets dark. And then when I sort of get up to go to the loo in the night, they're still out there lighting up. And then as it gets light in the day, they go off. They have a timer, I think, actually. But luckily they go off in the day. And then as it gets dark, they light again. And the thing that I've added as a completely sort of standard that we have all the way down the arches in the perennial cutting garden are the solar light strings. And so I've I've got one of the super long ones, the seven meter ones uh, on the first arch as you go into the cutting garden. And I'm actually about to get another one to go on the last lot because we've got a party coming up here and it's going to be dark by the time people leave. And so it just marks the beginning and the end of the garden, but they just last forever. So we put them out there actually when we did the shoot for this catalog months ago now, and every night when I get up in the night to go to the loo, they're still out there completely beaming away. And that is with no electricity. I just find that incredible. I love them. They're durable. You know, they're not the most beautiful things when you see them in the daylight, which is why hiding them in a box ball or putting them over like a lavender hedge or something. But I mean, they look fine and they just give such kind of jolly radiance to a garden um, without needing any sort of, you know, plugs and all that stuff which is so complicated so they would be i I would do a big shout out for them yeah so solar is becoming better and better isn't it yeah much more powerful i'm just buying an electric fence solar powered so yeah just to show how powerful they are yeah Yeah. yeah. (laughs) my next pick thinking about presents i've already got one and these these would be for my grandma sheila are your puzzles because they're really beautiful the pieces are lovely and chunky They're just wonderful to do, you know, on a a cold February day. And, you know, you've got the Venetian collection and then a lovely collection of of dahlias. And, um, you know, I'm not a puzzle person, but a lot of my family members are. Mm. So it'd be lovely to to see those coming together while the garden's asleep. Yeah, I am a puzzle person. I really Mm. love a puzzle. I love that thing of just being absorbed, but in a completely chilled out kind of way. They're very good for me for sort of calming I just get frustrated. Do you? They like like <laughs> yeah. sewing. Oh no, I, I become a real puzzle addict in the winter. It keeps you off the alcohol, I would say. And they just give a lovely thing to do when it you know, when the nights draw in, which is a bit of a cliche, but it's true. And I love those ones that are taken from the best ever photos, really, of Perchill. Mm. But talking about nights drawing in, I'm crazy about coloured candles. I, oh, yeah. I I just find that as the winter starts and flowers become hard to come by just outside the door, I find that if I have uh, candlesticks full of different colored candles, whether they be multicolored or just different individual colors down the middle of the table, when it you know starts to get dark at sort of four thirty, quite often I'll light them then, and they're slow burning our colored candles, and. They'll keep me going for three or four days, you know, all the way through for as long as I want, not just for dinner, but just giving me almost like that real uh, color boost that you do. Well, I find I lack in the winter a bit. So they are a mainstay for me. 
But, you know, from the moment the clocks change really in October until we get out the other end in March, because I struggle in the winter with the lack of colour and the lack of light. And for me, colour candles are the way to go. Yeah, something beautifully tribal about it, isn't there? And I remember Adam always saying an unlit candle is is the saddest thing in a house or something like that. So I've I've learned that off him to try and, you know, get them lit at three o'clock as soon as it feels like everything's mellowing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I actually you have done the most wonderful course on Crit Academy, which I love, about the flower yard. And I've actually been all the way through this year, I've been doing a couple of courses which are coming out in January and March on the cutting a 20 by 20 foot cutting patch. So excited for that. And on our containers here. And one of the things that I teach in that is I use colored candles when I'm trying to put together color combinations for containers or for thinking about designing a cut flower patch because I find the density of color that you get with candles is very flower-like. And actually just having the cutouts from a catalog, which is a a thing that's lovely too, but I actually find that I get better, I'm more effective in working out quite subtle colour combinations if I have a bank of coloured candles. So I actually have a box which I don't light, I just keep as colour reference, almost like sort of Pantone set, but they give you the same sort of scale and density. So yeah, I'm a big fan of the colour candle for various different reasons. <laughs> Such a good idea though for people that maybe haven't done the colour combination before, to have something physical to literally put together in the winter. I yeah. think that's a wonderful idea. And to work out, you know, if it really works or not. You know, whether that colour or whether you just need to change things, take something away or add something new in. Um, so what's your next one? Well, I really feel old choosing this because a few years ago I would have never even looked at a Christmas cracker. But I have to say, I love your guinea fowl or maybe their partridge Mm. Christmas crackers. I don't know where you found that. I think they are partridges, aren't they? Because there's lovely pears. They're partridges, um, yeah. <laughs> they look, they're exotic Amazonian partridges, uh, which is lovely. But I think they look absolutely charming and they, they make me want to do Christmas, which is quite unusual for me. <laughs> I don't know what's inside them. <laughs> well, they were quite difficult because of our sustainability thing. We mm. we can't we can't have glitter and we can't have plastic, really. You know, we're just, that is what we've sort of decreed. And so you can imagine to find crackers that don't have either glitter or plastic. Yeah. So all the the sort of, you know, the presents or whatever that you get in them are wooden and um, and there's no glitter on them at all. And oh. that won't appeal to everyone, but it just means everything's compostable or burnable or whatever. And yet, you know, you've got your Christmas bang, you know. And yeah, so we spent a while finding ones that we thought were beautiful enough uh, but sustainable. Oh, I think they're so beautiful. I'm going to cut them up and save them next year as little tags for my presents. I think they're gorgeous. Oh, yeah, that's a very yeah. good idea. Well, talking of tags for presents or anyway birds, that would be my next one is, again, like you, I surprise myself sometimes, but I love garden birds with an absolute passion. As, as I know you know, Adam has encouraged me and I love them more each day and I have Merlin app on my phone, which helps me identify the bird song. And so normally I would go for our native birds, but actually as soon as I walked into one of our suppliers warehouses last December, so I was selecting already last December, a year ago, I saw these sort of exotic birds <laughs> and I just love them. And they are made from polystyrene inside but they've got natural feathers on the outside. And the reason that I think they're okay sustainably is that they, I really put them through their paces and they don't sort of get knackered and, and broken. So they're not glass, so you're not going to break them, but they look exotic and pretty. They're fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a silver birch for my Christmas. I'm going to be up on the west coast of Scotland where silver birch grows like a weed. And I'm going to decorate them with several packs of those of exotic budgies. birds. Yeah, budgies. <laughs> I, I they think are. they're budgies. Yeah. I'm going to get them for my brother who's got two budgies, Bert and Ernie. Has he? <laughs> yeah. 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 No. They're fabulous bu budgies that have been on the e-numbers. I love them. And they're, they're not, you know, they're not hugely expensive. So that's why I just, yeah, I think, they, I think they're rather fabulous. So maybe one last choice from you and one last choice from me, Arthur. I really, really love the selection of tools that you're developing because I've just, when, while we're recording this, yes, literally yesterday I was planting a garden for my cousin and she'd got some long-handled trowels and things. And I have to say, 
after an hour of gardening, they really are a lifesaver. So mm. I love um, the the exclusive range that you're developing of the tools because, you know, they will last a lifetime. It is a lovely present to give somebody. And it's the thing that you don't think about buying yourself quite often. You spend all your money on the plants and things, but if you haven't got yeah. the tools to plant and garden, you really are a bit stuck. So it's nice to, I mean, you've done the little love heart one for a while, but I think these these more versatile range of of tools that are going to save you back uh, are very worthy Christmas presents. Do you know, my dad, who died when I was 17, so, ah, gosh, a long time ago now, 40 plus years ago, he had long handled tools and he was quite frail, my dad. But he worked quite often on raised beds, but with a, one of these long handled hand trowels and forks. And uh, he was a great bulb collector. He used to collect bulbs abroad and then plant them into pretty much pure grit to bulk them up and propagate from them. But I remember, I just have such fond memories of him working on his raised beds uh, with these long-handled tools. So as soon as I saw them, I I, um, I bought one. And and, and I they're personally my favorites because it's halfway between a border fork somehow and a hand mm. trowel. And so it's just that much more versatile. And so if you're just going to have one or two tools, I think um, they really tick the box. So as you say, they make a great present. Yeah. Can I have one more present? Yeah, go on. I absolutely love. I think this is such a good idea. The letterbox seed gift collections. I uh, think for yeah. last minute present. I mean, I just know I'm going to get the, the salad and herb one for my dad because he's always, you know, sadly last on the list. <laughs> but what a lovely idea and so beautiful. They come with tissue in a lovely box that opens up like a prezi. I think that's that's genius. Oh, good. Bees yeah. and butterflies, abundant borders and salad and herbs. Wonderful. Yeah, and they're you know they're really tried and tested the best of of our ranges really, and so all of them will have had their sort of bottoming out at Perch Hill over the years whether they really work and are really easy. Oh, good! I'm really glad you like those. So my final one is what I've just ordered for myself again for the west coast of Scotland uh, Christmas, and that is quite an expensive item, but I'm not ashamed to mention it because I just absolutely. Love it. Adam and I went to Copenhagen and maybe five Christmases ago to get sort of inspiration for our Christmas and for the Christmas range in the catalogue. And we saw throughout Copenhagen, a lot of the shops and even the parks had these very delicate wire Christmas trees that are electric. They're not natural, but they, they are literally like a tree of tiny little pea lights and you can get them in different sizes. I'm actually going to get the Whopper one because it's going to be my Christmas tree. And I personally really much prefer that sort of very Scandi minimalism to, a, to a, a, a Christmas tree, in fact, because you really see the decorations. So our exquisite lit tree, I, I was just so happy when I then found a supplier of these because I personally prefer mini decorations. I almost always use fruit and veg decorations more than anything but I also like little mini baubles in lots of colors and sort of rainbow colors and they just shine out and are just so beautiful not uh, lost against the green of a fir tree so that's going to be uh, I'm going to have a silver birch tree and an exquisite lit tree in the corner of the room which obviously looks lovely right on into the evening and it means I don't have to do fairy lights or anything it's just going to be my main Christmas decoration. And I love it. I, I, I bought one a few years ago and I'm definitely going to get one to take with me to Scotland. Yeah, beautiful. Because also the branches give a space for the decorations, don't they? Not like a dense fir tree. I always have that issue. Yeah, um, exactly. With the traditional yeah. tree. Yeah. Oh, great, Arthur. Well, everybody, I, I'm going to just tell anyone who hasn't heard, but Arthur's back joining us regularly again not maybe every week but uh, very regularly again in 2024 and so we'll be back co-hosting uh, the podcast from early in the year and we're going to start with a sustainability theme talking about lots of things like bees butterflies sustainability what we should be doing in our gardens and of course that's one of Arthur's main campaigns so we're going to concentrate on that with our new year's resolutions and on into the spring Thanks for joining me again, Arthur, and see you very soon. Pleasure. I feel very festive after all that. <laughs> oh, good. Let's go and decorate the Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Grow Cookie to Range. 
and hearing Arthur and I choose our favorites from what we're selling at Christmas this year. Next week, I've got a really exciting special guest, which is Martha Carney from the Today Programme. And she's joined by Nicola Bradbear. Both of them are incredibly enthusiastic about the charity that they work for, Bees for Development, which is a really interesting organization where they're promoting bees and people looking after honeybees and making honey rather than perhaps in the past cutting down trees, but so putting their energies into producing honey and then selling it as an income in areas in need of development. So join me next week chatting with Nicola and Martha on Bees for Development. You can find more information, photos and advice sheets on all the plants and recipes we talk about on this podcast by heading to the show notes or at sarahraven.com forward slash podcast.